Stupid Questions with Lena. This is the show where I ask stupid questions, but today there's a twist because I'm asking stupid questions about myself and I've also brought my friends along. Hey! Yay. So if you remember, a few weeks ago, we chatted about Islam and being a Muslim and a woman, and that was really, really cool. Uh, and what I didn't mention in that video is that I also have an experience of religion, and I thought it'd be really cool to bring along two of my friends who also have similar but very different experiences to religion to kind of talk about the surface issues around how we experience growing up religious and then explaining that to people now that we're all grown up. So obviously we only represent, we already represent white people. We don't even represent white people. We just literally represent ourselves. Yeah. Um, but we are talking about, I'd say like fairly middle class kind of experiences of specific kinds of Christianity. Just making you aware of that. So we'll go around in a circle. How's that? So basically my name's Lida. <laughs> I grew up, <laughs> my parents are both Christians. I grew up in the um, URC church. And then I went to an Anglican church, uh, which is Church of England, and I went to Church of England school. And then I started becoming very evangelical and I became a youth worker for a, a while. And I went to Soul Survivor and Spring Harvest quite a lot. And then I went to university. And now I would say I am an atheist slash agnostic. <gasps> the end. I'm Lucy. Um, I grew up a Quaker um, and generic. Christian kind of influences, but <laughs> Boring. very, very much Quaker, ran a lot of youth events for the Quakers. Um, Quakerism is a really liberal denomination of Christianity. Uh, and now I consider myself a Quaker, but I'm not an active attender of meeting, so I'm not sure. But you would identify as a Quaker? Yeah, I identify as a Quaker and I'd say I'm an agnostic Quaker. Cool. Okay. Anna, I'm, take I'm the Anna. stage. So I grew up as a Christadelphian, which is a kind of small bit of mainstream Christianity. It's quite a Bible focused community and it tends to be quite um, insular. Um, I was baptised uh, when I was 18 as a Christophian and stayed identifying as Christophian through most of university and then now I would say that I am Oh, it's the A word! I you have to pick an A word! It's so hard! Say, no, I would say I'm probably agnostic in the sense that I'm just really cool with not knowing. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I've really made peace with just not knowing all the answers and feeling like, how can we possibly know mm. what's gonna happen? I feel that. And I'm really mm. at peace with that. Yeah. I think as well it's like a whole like school of thought that you have to own where it's like I just make decisions about each issue separately yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then it's like how you can't summarize that with a word sometimes yeah and I wanted to make this video because uh, obviously Britain is historically quite a pagan and then um, Christian country and I think a lot especially in we were talking about living in London and living in very liberal circles um, I think there's a lot of people who are like religion's not a thing anymore yeah. is it <laughs> Like, and then yes, like yes, it, it is, is. <laughs> take the religious side of it and be like kind of see it as really really backwards and yeah you'll comment on that person i, I call yeah. this like ned flanders education <laughs> where it's like have you learned about christianity through ned flanders yeah because that's kind of quite bigoted and like yes. embarrassing um so yeah, and I think also um, because we're on different phases of our lives where we're meeting lots of new people, explaining backwards <laughs> yeah. your upbringing and why it has been good for you and also bad for you is like really complicated and something that we don't really make a lot of room for. <laughs> and the way it's like when people, like you can criticise your family, but if someone else does, you're like, oh, that's a bit, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. Good yeah. To say you that. can use that word towards them. Yeah, and it's and like I an issue of respect. Thing. Yeah, because I have lots of problems with religion. And yet when people who have never been religious are like, oh yeah, Christians and blah, 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 and you're like, hang on, it's not that. It yeah. is, it's just complicated. And I really find that I'll just mention in passing that I grew up religious or well, little things like mm. I voted for the first time last year because Christophians on the whole don't vote. And it was a massive deal for me to yeah, be engaging be like... in like, the, you know, democratic process. And I just tweeted and I had loads of people being like, what? what? <laughs> you never voted before? And of course, Twitter's like the wrong place to get into it, but there's this whole bit of you that yeah, I think it's really also, like, hard to explain because people have such preconceptions. Yeah, about it's almost it. like I don't know if I'm again thin ice, but I feel like it's almost like atheist privilege, where it's like I grew Ooh. up an atheist, therefore everybody else did, and it's like 
you see, like, there's an invisible layer of culture that's under a lot of people's lives in Britain that we just don't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Because it's like, you think, I think there is like, yes, there's lots of people who don't believe in God. I don't really believe in God at the moment. Um, but that there's a view that that is automatically the most sensible way that you could have been. Yeah. And if it wasn't like that, there's something weird about your life. <laughs> I kind of get how it's confusing as well, because I feel like I have a massive contradiction in myself in terms of kind of feeling like, oh, I feel like this is a big statement, but kind of feeling like God is a way that people use to explain the world when we didn't know a lot about the world. Yeah. And so kind of one side of my brain is a bit like, mm -hmm. it's like this fantasy mm -hmm. story. But then on this other side of my brain, I know all these people who believe in it in a very rational, sensible... Oh, yeah, I, I think... I think I it's like... For me, believe several <laughs> things at the same time. Some of the it. some of the most stupid questions I get asked about my upbringing are based on the idea that Christians just haven't thought about it enough, yeah. and that's a oh really dangerous God. way to be. Like you can't go up to like somebody who follows Buddhism or Islam or Christianity and go, "I just don't think you've thought about this hard yeah. enough, mate," because that is like one of the most disrespectful ways to yeah. come at it. And while I don't agree with everything, it's also just really hard for when people are like have you thought about this? And I'm like, well, yes, actually, I have yes. been thinking about it for about 20 yeah. years. Yeah. I go to whole summer camps just to think yeah. about that yeah. question. Yes. <laughs> You're like, there are whole books written by people who believe in God and yeah. have written, you know, I don't yeah. know. I think that's one of my things. It's like, you just haven't thought about it hard enough. And it's like, oh, we think about it in a really different way. I don't know. Yeah. What are the most stupid, let's get, like, the, the, can I the start way? with the mm. stupidest question? Yeah. Yes. The stupidest question I get asked on, like, any time you mention Quakers, is, is that anything to do with the oats? Like, always, <laughs> always, always. And it it kind of is, but not really. Like, Quakers used what to start... What is the story there? Right. Quakers... People didn't like Quakers because they weren't Church of England. So, um, this is in, like, the 1600s. Hmm. And so, the Quakers had to start businesses. So, because they were very trustworthy, we don't have to swear on the Bible because we're just trusted. Um, oh, wicked. I know, really cool. <laughs> so, we started banks and we started businesses, basically. And we started Cabri, Roundtree, like Terry's. Um, and so because Quakers were so reputable, Quaker Oats was like less known than Quakers and people would buy them. So that's that question answered for you. Every Who's single the man person. on the front? Random, not Quaker. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, we not don't dress ours. Amish. <laughs> Mine is, are your parents homophobic? <laughs> oh really? Yes. That's a, such a big jump. I know, but I, it's actually quite a small jump if you look at the representation of religion and TV on yeah. TV. <laughs> like that's a very yeah. small jump. That's usually where like religion comes into conflict with the rest of the world is through um, like sexuality and its acceptance. Yeah, which yeah. is like, and also there a are a lot of mm. there are churches who are homophobic. Mm. Oh yeah, so it's hard because it's like. Are um, you asking yeah. if I'm homophobic? Yeah. <laughs> because you can just ask me that and I'll be like, no. no yeah. yeah. Uh, are you asking if my relig my upbringing was homophobic? Yeah, it was a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest. Uh, but then that's, you know, it's a bigger, it's weird when they go through your parents. <laughs> and yeah. they're just like, because they're the people that I love and they're my family and they're not homophobic. And it's a weird way to ask me personally about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's under the assumption that they will be. It's a loaded yeah. question, isn't it? I don't know. And you, you don't know. My parents could be gay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. Good. What's your stupid? I think question? probably the stupid questions I get relate to the fact that I got married when I was very young. Yeah, and it's assumed that that was like entirely to do with being religious, mm. not to do with actually being in love with someone and very much wanting to marry them. Yeah, and just a lot of questions and assumptions about that, and also just a weird people feeling like they can ask weird questions like so like you, you really still, love him <laughs> still in love with your husband yeah. even though you got married when you were young like was and it like, forced marriage yeah like what that's really a, w <laughs> you, would you go up to other people and be like do you love your husband like that's such like a it's nothing to do with you but b yes and also <laughs> like why you can't ask me that that's a weird thing and just a a lot of like child bride jokes and like yeah. just people feeling like they can Ask really Which is weird because also that stage that most of their grandparents got married. Yeah. It's, it is a cultural thing. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, I have lots of friends. Like, people probably did get married younger. Mm. 
But I also have lots of friends who aren't married now who are still Christophians. Mm. And like, it's not like it's required. Yeah. I was <laughs> you wouldn't have been chucked also, out. Also, I went out with my husband for like years before we got married. It wasn't yeah. like... I think it wasn't like a well now I'm 21 yeah, yeah. it's like gotta... an that you meet someone and then you instantly get married even though you don't know them very well also because this is stupid questions with Lena obviously we're gonna ask of ourselves loads of like weird questions how do you guys feel about other people asking you about your religious like are you always up for answering questions or is it like I like, or... <laughs> generally am it depends I think as always with questions about anything the manner in which things yeah. are asked and if people yeah. are genuinely interested because they're interested in the subject or they're interested just in you as a person mm. then that's cool but yeah sometimes, sometimes there's a lot of assumptions there and mm. an assumption that you are a certain way or that you've grown up in some sort of and like the, horrendous back end an assumption <laughs> yeah. that you're Racist, there to explain it to them lots of lots of like oh you inform me of these things that I yeah I have not been you're like, well, you can no, Google it. Cool. Yeah, exactly. You can just go home and Google Wages. To be honest, I don't There's get... lots of stuff. We've got a website. Like, it's going to be all right. W, w, it'll be on the They'll screen right here. They'll explain it so much yeah. better than I ever will. Do you know, yeah. I don't get a lot of stupid questions because, to be perfectly honest, I, on the whole, actually, quite consciously, don't talk about You're invisible. Yeah. Because I do find it just raises a lot of mm. weird stuff and sometimes I just don't yeah. want to deal with it. And I'll mention it casually and people will have such an extreme reaction to it that I actually just find... And even with Quakers... I feel like people are very surprised to find out that I grew up mm. in a really religious environment. Yeah. And then it's kind of like whether you want to listen to the rest of the story yeah. as well. Because I, I don't know, I have some really good conversations with people, very rarely actually, because I think a lot of people want, want me to... They want their questions answered in a tweet they don't want it in a paragraph or in an evening yeah, <laughs> and sometimes yeah. these things are like it's a really long question to ask you know like do you still believe in god do you believe in predestination um you know like <laughs> it's just like do you do you, did you used to think that people were going to hell yeah. they're all that's a long answer <laughs> yeah and yeah. if you have the attention span i don't mind you asking any question but you're gonna need an attention span because it's complicated man <laughs> also there's just the whole like why are you surprised that i used to be religious it's because like, is it because I like am I not because I'm normal now? Or yeah, yeah, like, but like, you seem oh, you're I know. so liberal. <laughs> I'm like, and I guess yeah, I you know, used to be a Christian, but you're so nice. Yeah, yeah. Just just as soon as you say you're Quaker, but some people they get really, really like, um, like their whole opinion of you changes mm. within like three seconds, as I'm sure you find. Yeah, mm. it's both of you. But fact. I think it's it's interesting because if you uh, grew up in the UK, you'll, you will have had some experience of Christianity. Like yeah. no question of it, there'll be some either either it'll be a, a negative or positive experience or a school based experience. I say it's nearly always school based, mm. nearly always forced upon atheists or like yeah. like kids that aren't mm. aren't in that faith. Apparently, it was legal for it was a legal requirement to sing hymns in school. Really? Maybe still is because my mum used to mm. teach and so yeah, and R S as well. Yeah, mm. we had to pray every morning like it was like the swearing allegiance to the flag. <laughs> really? <laughs> every morning. Every morning. Wow. Maybe we did. I do don't the, um, the liturgy. We didn't pray at school. For the anything. for the sins that had have divided race from race, class from class. Wow. It's quite exciting though. Quite a passionate. Um, yeah. yeah. So a question that a lot of people ask is like, you know, that's the question of force. Oh. Do, do you feel like you were forced to to believe what you believed? Or, you know, because I don't know, I just feel like there is like a violence to the word force that I'm like, no, it's just my culture. In the same way that you believe that lots of things that happen on TV are okay, or you believe that, like, you know, you like you have like la like Labour voting parents, so you're probably going to yeah. vote Labour. It was kind yeah. of like that. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, we're like all with any indoctrination. <laughs> products of, of the people who surrounded us when we grew up, whether that's politics or religion. I think that... So in many ways, it was inevitable that to a point I was going to be Christadelphian for a period because that's what all my influences were. If I had kids, I would always just like them to feel like they understood the different options. And I think perhaps I feel like I didn't yeah. understand all the options. Mm. And I think that's the crucial thing. You know, mm. inevitably you're influenced by your parents and your school and your friends, but it's good to feel like I think and the internet though like <laughs> the know, internet I, though yeah but I didn't, didn't have get that the for a internet. while <laughs> like we got dial up internet when I was like yeah, yeah 14 or 15 and so just had very little access to exploring other ideas mm -hmm. and almost all my close friends work believe the same thing as me for me I think that I was never ever forced into it at all but Christianity 
was always the funner option growing up. It's like, do you want to stay at home on your own? Or do you want to come to this really cool party every Sunday and see all of your friends? It's like, well, I'll do that. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. Do you want to come on church family holiday and come to Cornwall for two weeks with all of your friends and like go surfing yeah. and like sing in the sun? Or do you want to like stay at home? <laughs> it's like, I would always do the fun thing. And the fun thing till I got to university was always Christianity. <laughs> really? That's Super really fun. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, and also I think that my parents showed me ways to like ways that Christianity could have a really good impact on the world. So when I realized there were loads of bad ways that Christianity can impact the world, that was like a shock for me. No, never forced into anything. Uh, my mum used to get really mad at me when I was a teenager and I'd be like, I don't really want to go to church this, this Sunday. <laughs> She'd be like, <sighs> she'd get in a bit of a huff. <laughs> like, like, so she, she has no control over yeah. that. So it wasn't like, um, like mm. a God is frowning upon you kind of huff. It, it was, was just like kind a, of like, this I'm your mother, do what I say huff. <laughs> Which everybody has, I think yeah. it's all recognisable. Um, so now we're just going to talk about the good things growing up as um, religious and the bad things. All of the stupid questions, this, there are some of your assumptions that are probably correct. Uh, so I just wanted to talk really, probably quite briefly, about some of the things that are in fact quite bad about growing up <laughs> religious floor open <laughs> yeah I mean for me the big one is is gender and feminism and that was the key reason for me why I left the church that I was growing up in Christelphians on the whole have quite traditional gender roles and I had sort of niggling uncomfortableness mm. about that for a long time and it just came to a head in various ways I felt like my mm. belief in feminism and my understanding of gender had developed to a point where it was you couldn't reconcile I couldn't it. reconcile what I was being mm. taught at that church. That they were fundamentally contradictory. Mm. I mean, obviously, people, lots of people are feminists and Christians, and because mm. I think there's the dividing up. A lot of my problems were with that specific church. Yeah, yeah. But then I don't know. I know the Bible pretty pretty well. Like <laughs> Christians yeah. are very into like reading mm. the Bible, and I think that. It, I think it's a hard. I think it's hard to read it as feminist. I think that it's a stretch. <laughs> I think that to see it as feminist, you have to accept that it's a product of its time and mm. the universal principles can hold true. But I don't think you can read the Bible literally and read it read it as feminist. Yeah, and Christophians are quite literal Bible mm. readers, so it just became yeah. A so there's a thing that's like probably right yeah and, and also it's quite traumatic mm, like it's difficult you know yeah. like working these things out i think what people have to understand as well is that lots of things in the bible people don't take literally um but it's hard because there is so much in there that's absolutely horrific yeah and it, you know there's there's loads of stuff about the slave trade in there there's yeah. loads of stuff ab like abusing women there's loads of homophobic yeah. stuff and but, but a lot of it's found in the old testament so people yeah. go oh but the new testament gave us a new covenant so we don't need to listen to the old testament mm. anymore but we will read it you've got people like paul i just remember paul being a Paul's massive definitely dick. a twat yeah <laughs> i, I remember that calling being, calling the show paul, paul was not i think we would have had words paul and i yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. paul was the new other. testament and he said that women should be quiet in church and he needs to eat one, to be honest. <laughs> so as a, a perfect representation of um, religion, or especially Christianity, being incredibly based in tradition, Quakers is, I'd argue, the most progressive denomination yeah, of Christianity. Yeah, everything you've said. I've only been to lesbian weddings. <laughs> like, it's really, really cool. You don't have to believe anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people are basically agnostic. Mm -hmm. But um, they, they believe in letting your life speak. Anyway, back to the point. Mm. We do have structural traditions, such as business meeting for worship, where everyone has to agree to some extent to the outcome. So you can have hours of sitting in silence about an outcome. It took us a week to decide that gay marriage was all right but in our church before it was legal because we had to sit and you have to speak when you feel like... a called to speak, theoretically, like, by the Lord. And it just means you sit around, you go through all of these, like, um, official things, you know what I mean? Like, it's a non-critical on religion reflection of tradition being just so embedded in religion. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, in a non-controversial way, I guess. It's just like, <laughs> why am I mean, I like, still... they really take democracy why quite seriously in the Quaker like, church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really want everyone to be happy. And that's great. But it's not practical, it's and we can't reform fun. it without having to sit through another fucking business yeah. meeting and reform it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think as well. So for me, it was like women and men can do whatever they want in the church. Like, well, like women can be ministers. It's fine. 
but they can't be bishops, I think, or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, there was a point where I was like, no, that's funny. Like, yeah. this is all fun and games. You can't get past this level. <laughs> oh, a literal glass ceiling. Yeah, like literally, yeah, yeah. A robe ceiling, if you will. Um, <laughs> Stained glass ceiling. Yeah, and it was like gender... Hey. <laughs> When I went to big gatherings of Christians all together and especially youth camps and stuff like that, there was lots of shaming around sex. And that is something that has affected me and is a true thing, I think, for a lot of people growing up. And but then I think, I don't know, it's just a very conservative way of growing up as well. Yeah, it's not Even though my parents are really liberal and yeah. vote Labour, um, there's a very conservative attitude to some things. And I think there are lots of people who aren't religious that grow up with those same attitudes to sex, yeah. the same difficulties mm -hmm. with sex, because they haven't been spoken to about it. Uh, but yet it is kind of regarded as um, by the liberal people we hang out with as yeah. being like a very, a quite a yes. Christian, yeah. you know, a thing. Yeah. Christian and conservatism is like entwined yeah. in a way that maybe it isn't for yeah. mm -hmm. And there were certain things that were like off limits, so like Adam's family wasn't allowed to watch that. <laughs> really? It's not about witchiness. What? Because well, I was allowed to read Harry Potter though, oh, really? but just I don't know, there's something about the Adam's family that just wasn't accepted. It is I a wasn't bit like allowed to watch um, By yeah. the Grove. Oh, really? <laughs> Which was like the crazy people well, on Biker Grove. It was really relationship annoying stuff. because I grew up in the northeast as well, oh. and like people from my school were in Biker Grove, so it's like a yeah, oh, cultural man. institution. It's like a big deal, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I've never really watched it, so I don't really know. But I assume mm. there was some. Assume sort. it's about like sex and stuff. Yeah, because mm. I think like, for me, Christianity and teams. conservatism are very wound up because that's mm. been my experience. Yeah, but the older I get, the more I meet people. Mm. from all different and I meet mega conservative people who aren't religious at all yeah. Yeah. and religious people who are more liberal than I am but for me they're, they are quite linked yeah, yeah. Because I, yeah, it was a very traditional church I grew up in. The yeah. weather is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, no, I was thinking that. I was like, there's a storm. It's oh, God, it's God. <laughs> yeah, after it's us. God. <laughs> oh, there's a storm for no. us. <laughs> Sorry for bringing you on the second Divine time, guys. <laughs> it's like, now they started off talking about God on it's YouTube. You, That's it. It's when you said Paul needed to, uh, what did you say about I said, Paul? oh, yeah, Paul needs to stick it or something. <laughs> yeah. And then it just started hailing. <laughs> oh, yeah, locusts. Next. Something else to point out. Although I... Um, so I grew up Christian. My knowledge of the Bible is limited to Sunday school knowledge. So okay. it's really limited. So you know, I'm like, oh, a plague of locusts. Like, <laughs> like that's probably what happened. Yeah, I, think I so. have, yeah. Like, but you really... have like weird knowledge of like. Yeah, but I love like... to have that in depth knowledge of something because it's like academic knowledge almost because you've got yeah. so much there. I think Chris Laughlin's are really into like understanding the Bible and like I know like an an odd number of Hebrew and Greek words for like. <laughs> is that how people find out? Because you like translate Hebrew. It. No, I'm not not like that, but just like little things and I don't know though because it kind of means that when I because I'm so familiar with the bible it meant that when I decided that I didn't agree with it there was actually very little room for gray area because I I was like well I know this inside out yeah yeah and and I know that I don't I don't agree with it. Well, like, there's if you want to keep people like... in Christianity, just make sure they don't read the Bible well, very thoroughly. There is that whole, like, oh, you know, <laughs> and the there's the Yeah. And um, it kind of worked against it in that I was like, oh, I can't just, like, go and, like, study this. Because yeah. I have. And I, that's kind yeah. of why I don't agree with it. Because yeah, I, I know it's like Paul sorry, says, I'm like actually I don't like that. I don't agree. We were with saying it. like funny moments when you've grown up religious, but like one for me is when I'm sitting in a pub and somebody has the wrong Bible quote on their arm, yeah, or like they've taken quote, it completely out yeah. of context. And I'm like, that is just not what it means. Yeah. <laughs> like if you wanted to like have a tattoo about love, you should have just got a heart. <laughs> like <laughs> you've made it a bit complicated, didn't you? It's yeah. so funny, isn't it? How how religion, especially Christianity, is like demonized and romanticized. Yeah. yeah. In that way, it's like tradition it's like, and like um, heritage and. Yeah, sometimes like with loads of people wearing rosaries and stuff, used to make me feel really uncomfortable. And Topshop used to sell rosaries. And I was really like, actually, if that was any other religion, that'd be like really disrespectful. Yeah. And while I wasn't a Christian at that point, I was still just like, I don't think this is okay. I think there's like something fundamentally weird about that. When that was a trend, I dug out my dead grandmother's rosary and just awesome. wore it places. <laughs> you said, I dug out my dead grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> dug her out and she was like, what? Christianity's back in Where is this story no, she going? Just had lots of, she, she was a sort of Catholic that would go on like, kind of like trashy pilgrimages and like would go to Rome and buy all that like you know how you buy the cheap Eiffel oh, yeah. Tower she'd buy like the cheap rosaries. Oh so you were oh, like I Romans, have you been? I, no, I haven't. It's intense I really the amount of like Pope stuff. There yeah is. she's got loads of little yeah. like Pope necklaces yeah. and yeah it's cute and nice but also like 
you bought into the commercialism. Yeah. <laughs> like, now. See, again, I think people do really confuse like Catholicism with the rest of Christianity. Like when I mm. meet somebody who's Catholic, I'm like, tell me about how you grew up because yeah. it is really different. And like, I don't really know that much about the Catholicism There's to be honest. There's so much. It's a lot of all or nothing because all my family is Catholic. And we just kind of are Quaker. Oh, really? And so we go to their services and my mum's like, I'm so bored. <laughs> They're like, why? <laughs> but it's happily, like, um, stuff that you can't engage with. Mm. It's very, you know, it's not like Bible study. It's not like we get it down to your level. It's very, like, this is all above you. You yeah. are stupid. Mm. <laughs> Quite yeah. like, you know, you say what, mm. you, you know, you, you talk when you're spoken to. But that's what the Church of England, because I used to, oh, also fun fact, I used to work for the Church of England. Really? I worked at the Coventry Cathedral. <laughs> Oh, that's really cool. So, fun times. I sat through a lot of them. Um, I know a lot of eulogies. But um, a, a thing um, to do with that is like also I think that everybody needs patterns and rhythms in their life. And some people find Catholicism and also like very traditional Church of England stuff really like... Um, like sometimes also when I'm like reading stuff in the media about mindfulness, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Are you just talking about... Like Quakerism and, and Buddhism and, yeah. and prayer, but like <laughs> without the, because we haven't invented that, have we? No. <laughs> that's not like a new thing. But then I think that's interesting, isn't it? Because as has that very much sprung from? Mm. I think like, like the trends on YouTube feeling. for like routine regime, blah blah blah. I'm like we're still looking for patterns to explain our oh, lives yeah. in, but people don't want it to involve God. Which is okay, yeah. but it's just like oh, we're so separate from that. Like oh, they're so, they're so unevolved. Those religious people like following mm. all these like rituals, and it's like mm. you're doing the same thing, and that's okay. But a lot of it is just due to being human, and humans yeah. need rules and belief systems and structures, and we have had that just in a different way. Yeah, I think. yeah. I don't know. We should get onto good things now. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. I, like, I like good things. No, I like the good things. Um, so good things for me was like I feel like I have a really high self-esteem not just because I had great parenting and my parents are really loving because I grew up from a young age believing that like I fitted in the world and like I was meant to exist and that's something that uh, obviously it should be for every child but it just was so n not accidental like I was purposely taught that I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys oh, sorry. get that as well like from a young age it was like God loves you you're supposed to be yeah. here that's really interesting. So I, I think that sometimes when people are like, oh, you never have self-esteem issues. And I'm like, well, I do, but they just never get to a certain level because I think I just grew up you with this whole like... You like you have a right to exist. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I No, we have... Um, Quakers is big on the idea of let your life speak. And like, mm -hmm. even if you can't attend meeting or whatever, like the, the primary function of you as a Quaker is to do good things and um, hold up four testimonies, which are truth, simplicity, equality, and peace. So try you and can't argue simply, with them, really. Yeah, tr truthfully, <laughs> simply, simply um, treat people equally and be peaceful. And they're, they're very, yeah, they're pacifists. But, um, so you're, you're always <laughs> taught... We're all going to become Quakers in this. Quakers I know, basically great. what's happening Quakers is that we're all Quakers. getting slowly converted. <laughs> no, Quakers I love it so great. much. <laughs> but, um, but it's definitely a case of, so people can, can claim they're atheist Quakers, basically, but then they're going on protests, they're, they're, they're like chaining themselves to things to stop people from selling arms to like Saudi they're they're um, treating everyone with respect they're working in soup kitchens that's their way of, of believing in God yeah and, like, showing their belief in God and for me that's like so inspiring yeah and been such a good thing to see from a young age so yours is more about active. like action yeah and... yeah yeah faith in action that's another mm. phrase faith in action, faith in action. <laughs> Um, but then also there's this okay so this is a question that we can't answer but I think it's an interesting one about whether people are religious and therefore good people or if they're good people who have found religion to explain why they're trying to be good yeah it's interesting isn't it like it's uh, also how much does it even my mum has a real idea that um, to be moral is the best thing you can be and to have a concept of morality but I don't know whether that came from like church or whether mm. she's always had that you know yeah because i think morality. every community finds a way to draw a line between right and wrong mm. uh and this is like we even if you're an atheist so there's definitely there's definitely always people yeah. always trying to draw lines because um, i i don't know i'm inclined to think that people i mean good people and bad people is such like a naive way of explaining it but i do mm. think fundamentally people use things at their disposal to facilitate their worldview so if people who are selfish are Christians, they will still be selfish and they will use Christianity to justify that. Mm. And just like selfless people who are Christians will still be selfless and will use their Christianity to motivate them to do more selfless stuff. And it's the same outside of that. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. That's a really good way of Another it. thing yeah. you're going to like. 
or hate about mm. Quakers <laughs> because I just love them. No, they they believe that there's that of God in everyone. So like everyone's got like an inner mm. light, and so everyone is fundamentally good. And then, yeah, that's really it's nice. Just a really nice way of looking yeah. at everyone. Yeah, and that's a nice thing. That's something that's definitely come from Quakers that I didn't think before, but has been really encouraged in me is to be like mm. see the good in everyone. Also, I think it's like a weird way of going about it, but I think that I had this idea of forgiveness that was instilled at me at a young age and I think that a lot of people have that but I just went to talks on it and whole camps themed on those topics yeah. Christianity and like I just thought about it a lot so like I'd probably camps. forgive you if you do something horrible <laughs> to me because it doesn't matter like that's yeah. just something that I think I've seen more good come of that than bad yeah, yeah whether I believe in God or not I definitely think the Christian emphasis on forgiveness is a very positive and that everybody thing. needs even it. if I don't yeah even if I don't always if, even if I can't always forgive and I can't always mm. push through it it's so good to have that, yeah, that you fundamentally there, believe like, in forgiveness yeah and you've been made to think about it not just seven times <laughs> for 77 times times. Seven, yeah oh, okay. my, I've been how many sevens how not many seven times seven so yours is a we've fallen we've gone to church for a while I also have on a lighter note mm. a mega random set of skills okay <laughs> oh yeah so I have like catered by myself for a camp of 65 people for a week yeah. in a tent. That's, that sounds normal. <laughs> I've organized a quiz for 300 teenagers <laughs> just oh by, like, by myself. I've like, yeah, taught, like organized a youth group every Friday for years yeah. for children and like organized activities and taught lessons. And then sometimes so I fun. mention these things, like the whole like catering a camp thing, I, that came up randomly in conversation a work yeah. thing and people are like you're like what, when what, did you do why that? Earth? Which, I was like, like yeah, I was like 19 and I just like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like you just do the most well like yeah I formed like four bands between the age of like 12 and 16 and yeah. like found all the equipment and wrote songs I do think it's given me a very like just like ca like a can do attitude that sounds so like lame and cheesy but yeah, there's loads of like weird community things that you're like, I can orchestrate these things. Yeah, community yeah. stuff. I, I could think. do the cup dance since I was about 10, and oh then people God, started doing it, and I was like, thing. we've literally been doing the cup dance for about 20 years, but cheers, <gasps> cheers for that. Yeah. That was that, no, <laughs> not a Christophian thing. Oh. No, no, it didn't, didn't make it into your. No. And, and just dumb things like, I'm very good at trying to introduce people to people, yeah. but in a big group kind of way. But you should see me. I'm so sorry. If you ever come to a thing where I'm like doing a meetup or something, which I doubt will yeah. ever happen, especially as I'm talking on your channel. But, um, yeah. That makes it sound like it's like, it's like bringing like me meetup. down. <laughs> like, I'm on your channel. Yeah, Nobody's going to hear about it. No, but I do stuff like I make everyone career. do a name game and I yes. sit you down. You're just used like, to those activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My name's Lucy, backwards that's Ickle, and on Mars I'd be a chocolate teapot. Yeah. <laughs> like that. But I love that's, that. Yeah. I love being in big... I think that put, yeah. forcing young awkward teens to be in big groups of people yes. is fundamentally and, and big groups of accepting people yeah. mm. or people who are more likely to be accepting is fundamentally a good thing even if what they're accepting of is actually really <laughs> close-minded it's good yeah no totally yeah. Because I'm my, some of my very best friends are I met them through Christophie and stuff I met my husband that way but I think particularly with friends yeah I was comfortable at Christophie in gatherings for young people in a way I never felt comfortable at school yeah mm. same and I dread to think if I'd only had that school experience, yeah. how shy and, and also, uncomfortable with myself I would be. Yeah. yeah, they make people, they grow teens' confidence a mm. lot, I think. I'm not sure how you found that. Yeah, I think, as, as well, also, I think I was forced to interact with loads of different age groups, and I don't see that as much yeah. in the rest yeah. of the world. So, like, totally. as a publicist, I found it really easy to relate to all these yeah. different, like, age groups and people and I just slot in yeah, and then I was like people oh other people ages, can't do yeah. that <laughs> yeah. as much or like and also just like accepting all of these people in my house all my time like my mum and dad just have all of these people yeah, to stay yeah it's just normal to all socially the time. hang out with people yeah, of yeah. Like, which like, I think is quite old and... like it's quite an olden thing to do it's like you know I think people have lost that sense of community a little bit like I miss that like, I don't know I struggle I don't, to stop believing like in God I've because really I miss the people found a community in like the publishing book world you think you have? Totally. Yeah. And I think that actually, arguably, a community that has entirely accepted me yeah. um, for me. And I think particularly, oh, I get this, like, mm. don't like overstate the impact of publishing work, but you know. <laughs> it's just Boxman. <laughs> going through like a really difficult like time with my own identity, realising that I didn't believe in God and being part of a very tight knit community where I didn't know a lot of people, like actually, mm being part of this book community was really like a big thing. Yeah. yeah.
The Church of Books. We should yeah. start it. <laughs> um, I think as well, so something that's kind of negative and positive is that uh, I think... I think it was only about three years ago I actually realised that death was going to be a thing. <laughs> and that's yeah. Yeah. And now I'm really dealing with that because I'm like, we right. could, I we're probably all going to die. Point, yeah, I don't yeah like no, I, because I was, I was brought up to believe that we would never die. I, I, and I think now, like, death really shocks me because I actually believe it's going to happen. Yeah. But so I feel a lot calmer about death because mm. I always kind of had this uncomfortable feeling that I didn't quite get the appeal of what was on offer, like living eternally. <laughs> you were like, oh, thank God, I'm going to die. what are we going to do forever? Yeah. And I know that, like, I, I know all the rhetoric all about, like, can't we're not going to be like... 200? Like, yeah. why can't I come I remember. I'm just really, like, really at peace with, like, having a period of life to try and, like, be a force for good and make the world, like, a little bit better, even if it's just by being, like, a nice person... Mm. and then that's it and, and then like, you get to I'm have a really, rest like I'm really mm. like mm. cool with that I and found out Anna was a Christadelphian because I posted a picture of us on, on Instagram and my Christadelphian friend was yeah. like how do you know yeah. Anna James <laughs> she's one of our Christadelphian friends yeah. and I was like what yeah. no that's, that's just amazing. amazing we had that really surreal lunch where we were talking in this language that we don't normally use for publishing people it's like oh yeah so i was like, like did you talking this? about the trinity and stuff yeah like, so it's super weird <laughs> you were like, like two worlds colliding oh yeah. My God. yeah yeah but it is weird because i think there's a lot of people that are have grown up in different christian communities and you just don't know yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you don't so know and it's so. it's hard when people like make massive generalizations like that are just so off the mark that i'm like what why are you saying that like we all grew up the same because yeah. we just didn't so basically um, it's just like Take people as individuals. Yeah. And be yeah. kind. Yeah. yeah. Listen <laughs> to people and don't ask them stupid, stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, make sure you've allotted at least two hours to yeah. then have yeah. it explained <laughs> to you. Yeah. Um, Just but yeah. don't be ignorant. I don't... If I had to <laughs> go back it. in time, I'd still be... I'd like to have been raised a Christian, to be honest. I think it was a ride. I'm glad my, my <laughs> mum was a Christian, but I'm glad my dad wasn't. And I'm glad... It wasn't like... Uh, you got like a balance. I got very... Ba- and I was never made to do anything. So from the age of like 11 or 12 when I started being like, actually, I really don't like singing hymns hmm. in Church of England Church. I could just say to my mum, I really don't like singing hymns in that church. And she went, neither do, like, neither do I. Neither do I. Hymns, well, I, like I really this miss one. Hymns. I don't like that one. Yeah. I really miss singing. Really? I love Aww. singing. You should go to like and a proper... I miss, just that's like the a thing I miss the most. Traditional... Like, just join yeah. a choir. So. Yeah, like a proper Church of England yeah. shebang for like every once a month or something yeah. where they have their proper sing along. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I can imagine that being yeah. really rewarding. And also, um, there's this thing called Spring Harvest where like 10,000 Christians take over pretty much every Butlins in the UK. Don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of people <laughs> haven't. I don't know why, it's been happening for like 20 years. So I used to go to Butlins every year and just wander around and I was just didn't have to check in with my parents ever. Yeah. They were just like, saw That's me really at nice. 8 didn't worry yeah. if they didn't see me to yeah. 11 the next day to be honest and yeah. it was just this community of really trusting people who just looked after each other and everyone's like have you been to Butlins and I'm like obviously I've like lived at Butlins <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah we had similar things like that where yeah I was being looked after by guest yeah. family and mm-hmm. the guest family would be like we'll see you at like two in the morning I'm like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah you'll see me then there was a lot of freedom but weirdly mm-hmm. I think people think you grow up in this really closed way and I'm like I had so much more freedom it's a funny mix uh, than some people yeah. <laughs> it's a funny mix yeah, like yeah. Your parents know. do fun- fundamentally trust you in some respects. Yeah, and I feel like I was raised by a lot more people than just my parents. Like that's I, really nice. I feel like I had a lot of like aunties and uncles in this really expansive yeah. way that I. I mean, yeah. we literally call uh, Christophians literally call people yeah. aunties and uncles and sisters really? and brothers, don't they? Yeah. So, but I grew up in a very when I was a kid, I grew up in a very small church where so we had lots of aunties and uncles that were more like gra- pseudo grandparents, but mm. me and my sister were the only kids there. So um, like that kind of. Partly the reason we went on all these epic Bible camps. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's it's obviously if it's not your belief, then it's strange to think about. But there are whole libraries of like like Christian um, the theology and very well thought through PowerPoint presentations <laughs> that are like one I disagree with. Like they're thinking about it and they're yeah. changing their yeah. they're changing their ideas about it all the time as well. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's something to think yeah. about. People aren't blindly believing. No, even they, they, not they commit to studying it. <laughs> that's like, for sure. That's Church is full of Hermione's. I don't know how to finish up. Because I don't want it to be like preachy, like, no, when you meet Christians, don't be mean to them. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, when you meet Christians, don't be mean to them, well, it's I think rude. I it's just saying, like, don't assume anything. 
Yeah, well, this yeah. is an educational about video. Anyone. And I think it shows that from the different experiences that clearly the three of us have had. Yeah, even within our no, quite limited. There's just no yeah. one experience. Let us know what you think in the comments, <laughs> as always. Uh, bet you will. And um, I'd love to talk about it more in the comments because I do like talking about it. I think it's really interesting. Um, but what you were going to say, Anna, was that what do you identify now as? Oh, so I, I kind of identify as a humanist. I think I really believe in believing in people and the fundamental potential of people to fix problems yeah. that are happening now. And I think that's a really healthy, sane way of seeing the world. Or it certainly has been for me. Yeah. And I think also, like, it is, whatever you believe, it's actually mind-blowing that we're all here. Yeah. Like, isn't that just insane? No wonder people, like, no wonder I could believe what I believed for so long because I'm like, it is mind-blowing that we're here. Like, why the yeah. are we here? Like, what the? Yeah. Right. You think about the odds. Big anyway. question for the end of the video. <laughs> So if you want your mind blown, like <laughs> yeah, sit down and think about this for a while. I think. No, we're great. We're good. We're all really cool. Yeah, I'm Everyone gonna go to a Quake. I'm gonna visit a Quaker church. I know. Where we're all getting to see you. We're going to it's see you on so Sunday, mate. Thanks for coming on the us. channel. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Spread out the love. Um, I will leave links to um Anna and Lucy's videos in the description and here, and you can check them out. They've both got amazing channels. Click here if oh. you want to see all of the crazy different um episodes of Stupid Questions with Lena, and there'll be more coming soon. If you have any suggestions for more Stupid Questions with Lena you'd like to see, please leave them below, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.